PID controllers are used everywhere in industry. They're used for controlling motor speed, process temperatures, flow rates, amperage on motors, anywhere that you need to control some process variable and have it uh, balanced with your set point, you're going to find a PI or a PID controller or some variant of throughout the electronics of that industry. In term three of the electronics course, of the op-amp course, we looked at an op-amp PI controller and we were using it to regulate motor speed. So in that instance, the ver uh, process variable was speed feedback. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to review that op-amp circuit just to refresh some of the terms and to see again how we derive the Laplace transform for that. So recall that the transfer function, T of S, is equal to your output, in this case V out, divided by E. E in this example is the error. So uh, you may be able to read it on the side there. E is equal to your set point minus your process variable. Set point is what you're asking for. Process variable is the thing you're trying to control. In our example, I've brought those two together in the term of E, and so my input is actually my error for my process. You can assume, therefore, that there must have been a summing amplifier that would have taken in uh, SP and PV. So, for example, if all you had was a circuit similar to this, and you had some fixed resistance here, and a resistor there, and a resistor there with the non-inverting tied to common, you could put your set point on one of these and your PV on the other. And if all these resistors were equal, then your output would be the error. So this would have become my error here. Now in practice with analog circuits, how do you perform subtraction? So one of the ways that you do that is you introduce your set point in one polarity and your process variable in the opposite polarity. Then when you add them together, you're effectively subtracting their relative magnitudes from each other. And that's what we do. So set point could be, for example, a negative value and the process variable could be a positive value. And when the amplitudes are equal, the two polarities cancel each other out and the net current through the feedback path, in this case, this current here, would end up being zero because the current would just circulate between the set point and the PV. So you could build a summing amp in front. Alternatively, you could build the summing amplifier right into the PI controller itself. And instead of having a single R, you have two R inputs and then you put the set point and PV on the other. But for the sake of depicting the math, I've just shown it as a single error coming in. So again, coming back to our transfer function, we have V out divided by E. That's the expression. So how do I work that out in Laplace? Well, remember that the non-inverting input for this type of an op-amp, because we have negative feedback, you have a virtual ground here. So I can get an expression for I as follows. I is equal to the voltage E minus zero volts divided by the input resistance R. However, the characteristic of the op-amp is that it has an extremely high input impedance, so it's not drawing any current on the inputs. Therefore, whatever current goes through uh, resistor R on the front end must also flow through the capacitor and the potentiometer in series with it. So the output is KVO. Uh, why am I calling it KVO instead of VO? Well, that's because the other side of the feedback path is not connected directly to the output voltage, but in fact, it's connected to the wiper of potentiometer G. It's called G because we'll see later on, it's sort of a gain pot. But the voltage there is some fraction of V out. So K, for example, could be somewhere between, let's say, 10% of V out or 0.1 all the way to one as a multiplier. So if I take K and I multiply it by V out, I'm gonna get anywhere between 10% to 100% of my output voltage. And so when I'm solving for V out, K is going to be a part of the equation just as a scalar, depending on the position of the potentiometer G. But that gives me something I can relate to for solving the second half. So in addition to the input current being given by the expression E minus zero volts over R, I can also define it as zero volts minus the output, which is KVO, all divided by 
the impedance of the capacitor, which in Laplace is 1 over SC, plus the impedance of what will later prove to be the potentiometer controlling the proportional gain, and we've called it conveniently P. So P is resistance, R is resistance, and then you have your capacitive impedance, which is a function of frequency. Don't forget that the Laplace operator is equal to J omega, and that's for sinusoidal stimulus. Now I can drop I because I'm really just interested in equating the two second terms. So uh, dropping all the zero volts, I have E over R is equal to negative K V O all divided by 1 over SC plus P. Multiplying in the second part, top and bottom by SC, we have E R is equal to negative K S C V O all divided by S C P plus 1. And we could kind of leave the transfer function there, but that's not how we want to express it. I want to solve for V out ultimately. So cross multiplying the terms with V out, I end up with negative 1 over K, and I'm going to purposely bring this outside, and then I end up with SCP plus 1 in the numerator divided by SRC in the denominator, and all that gets multiplied by E. So E again is my input, that's my error, and my output now has this. And I can break that down into one more step. So I'm going to take this negative 1 over k and recognize that you basically have um, a fraction with uh, two parts to the numerator. And so we can separate that out into two separate fractions. So the s and the c will cancel in the numerator and the denominator of the first part. And you end up with p over r plus 1 over s r c and all of that gets multiplied by e okay and when you do that you see you have a proportional term right here so this is your proportional term let's just pull that up so we can label that so that there is your proportional gain And this next term right here, if you haven't figured it already, that is your integral. So whenever you have a something over s in the Laplace, it's acting as an integral function. If you see s in the numerator, it's acting as a derivative function. We don't have derivative in this example, we're just doing pi. So P, coming back to our circuit, P is controlling the proportional gain. So that pot by itself controls the proportional gain. K, on the other hand, is affecting the gain of everything. So the smaller the K, in other words, the smaller the representation of the output voltage, the larger the effective gain. So it's a reciprocal function. You get negative because of inversion in the op band. But the integral is primarily controlled by the value of C, but not independently of C. It's also controlled by the input resistance as well. So there you have it. There's your PI controller using an op amp. And in the next stage, what we're going to do is figure out how do you implement that in the digital domain where you don't have this continuous sampling. That's the thing about, or the beauty about analog circuits is that they are always working. There's no discrete time delays that you get in the microprocessor error. So we have special considerations like Nyquist that we have to remember when we're solving problems in the digital domain. Um, again, you're going to probably find a number of these analog systems still at play in the industry. They were a huge part of solving these types of control problems. And in this case here, you have the math. And so in the next step, we're going to look at the digital processor.